you might have seen this poster in my previous videos and you're probably wondering what this is for well now you're gonna find out I'm gonna show you how to make a bunny mask and stay tuned at the end of the video you're gonna get a surprise so make sure to watch the whole thing let's get to it so as you can see I'm turning the camera around let's go 180 degrees and what you need firstly is a pair of scissors doesn't matter if it's like a textile scissor or a normal office scissor then you need a tape measure or a measuring stick doesn't matter i just use a measuring stick because i went to a technical college anyways um then you'll need some thread for the buttons to make the mask detachable then you need two buttons as i said before make sure that the needle fits through the buttons because it's a bit annoying if you can't like sew the button in properly as you can see here i'm trying to like show you that it's important to have a good button <laughs> and yeah uh yeah <laughs> then the most important thing you need a sweater i always get mine at secondhand shops you can buy you can use your own ones as well you can also use jersey sweaters but knit is much better so the first thing you need to do is take off the tag it's actually not that important but i always do it because the tag annoys me because like who needs tags as you can see it took like a while because my seam ripper is broken but i got it off <laughs> and then you just gotta lay it out just uh, connect the seams as you can see here i connected them and lay it out flat Next, you have to measure your head circumference. My head circumference is 60 centimeters or 59. I always make sure to measure 28 centimeters in uh, diameter for the mask itself and 30 centimeters upwards. So that means you have enough space from your forehead to the top of your head. Here you can see me measuring the 28 centimeters sideways and the 30 centimeters upwards. I just laid down the material really flat and just cut up just normally. Yeah, here you can see the 30 centimeters and the 28 centimeters. And then I just flipped it around so that I have it on the inside because we want to have the nice side uh, on the outside and we are going to sew the inside together. And yeah, it was a bit crooked. So I just finished it up a bit with the pair of scissors and yeah. That's pretty much it. As you can see, I just finished it up. And yeah, that's 60 centimeters divided by two with 30 centimeters going downwards. And after that, I started sewing. Make sure to sew the inside and not the outside. As you can see, I'm sewing uh, the ends together. And here you can see me making my Instagram story, how I sew, and that's what I always do. And yeah, after that, I just finished up the top part, actually not the top part, but like the ends. And here you can see the finished product for the circumference of the head. And yeah, here's me finishing it up a bit and making it a bit cleaner. As you can see, I made it a bit crooked. So that's why I also uh, corrected that by just cutting it off to make it straight. And yeah, after that, I also used a pen, a textile pen, and made sure to draw in seven centimeters from one end and seven centimeters from the other end. So that's basically where the bunny ears go. So you know that seven centimeters is the circumference for the ears themselves. As you can see here, I just showed you like where to sew the middle part together. Make sure that the seam in the middle is actually in the middle. Otherwise it would look a bit weird and here you can see me sewing it together. Make sure to sew over it twice because better safe than sorry. You don't want to have like holes in your bunny mask. Otherwise it wouldn't, it would defeat the purpose, you know, of wearing one actually because then cold air would get in. And yeah, this is basically the two holes on the sides as you can see and the sewed part in the middle as well. And yeah, I turned it inside out to show you the how it looks like when it's kind of finished. And yeah, there's a seam in the middle and that's pretty much it. I folded it up as well. And yeah, that's the body part.
And here I'm just marking the spots where the button should go. It's basically there where your ear holes are and basically there where you wear your AirPods, earphones, whatever. <laughs> And after marking the spots, as you can see here, they're orange. I just chose a color because I can see it better than any other color. Then you just need your needle, the thread and the two buttons. In the manual, which you will see at the end, I did that at the end, but you can do this right after making the body. And yeah, you'll need the thread. You will have to just tie it together on one end to make it like stronger to reinforce it that's what i always do and then i tie it into the needle it itself so that it's like four times the thickness of the thread itself and yeah basically you have to just sew in a button that's pretty much it it's not that difficult i didn't learn it anywhere i mean it's basic common knowledge <laughs> as you can see here that's how the end should look like because otherwise it wouldn't hold in the knit material other because it's too small and yeah here you can see me just poking the material and after that i just sewed in the button like after sewing it enough you make sure to just put the needle through the button but not the material so that you can just take the thread and wrap it around the button so that it's reinforced even better then take it back and cut it off and after cutting it off you have to just tie it together just make some knots so that it's 100 percent secure and then you can just do the second one here you can see the first button it's on focus oh no it oh no it isn't oh it is anyways yeah that's pretty much the first button and do that again a second time and yeah, that's pretty much it. Here's pretty much the second button I'm sewing in. I'm showing it to you at eight times the speed because it's basically the same thing as the first one. Make sure to always reinforce the thread and the button itself. And yeah, after you're finished with that, you are pretty much done with the body. And finally, we're finished with the body. As you can see, we finished the two buttons and that's pretty much it for that. On to the ears. Get back the sweater from before and lay it out flat. Take the bottom part. And now, I also forgot to mention this, we need sponge rubber for stabilization. As you can see here, I'm spazzing out. Anyways, the first thing you need to do is cut out the ears, which are going into the knit material i basically just do it by rule of thumb so just to make sure that it looks like bunny ears i don't know i don't like actually measure anything i just make it din a5 i don't know if you get that everywhere but yeah that's pretty much the measurements for that one piece of sponge rubber a5 and make sure to cut out the knit material a bit bigger because if you sew it together and turn it inside out it's going to be a bit smaller so that's why you gotta leave a bit of space to the sponge material. If you got two ears, make sure to flip them onto the right side and lay them on top of each other to make sure that they fit together. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You gotta just make four of those. And when you're done, you can get on to sewing them. Yeah, I told you to flip the things to the right side make sure to flip it back onto the wrong side because you don't want the nicer side to be inside of course and yeah afterwards we start sewing the ears together and yeah it's basically a two-parter it's not that difficult you just sew it uh, from side to side keep the opening at the top as you can see here the seams are pretty nice and secure and yeah, here I'm just turning it inside out. And it's a bit difficult at the end, especially because the tip is like always like the most difficult part to like get nice and like long. And yeah, here I'm basically just putting the sponge rubber into the ear to make it more secure and more stable so that it falls nicely. Here you can see it took, took a nice shape. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the bunny ear numero uno. And yeah, 
it's pretty nice let me know what you think of how i made it and that's basically also the second one i'm making and yeah and yeah as i said before you have to actually make a second one of course but yeah it's pretty easy and straightforward make sure to always like to reinforce the threads put in the sponge rubber make it secure and there you go second one is done here i'm just showing you off how it kind of looks like when you like hold it onto the body and yeah next up we're gonna sew the bunny ear to the body and yeah make sure to take one bunny ear and like put it into the body and then turn it inside out make sure that the sponge rubber is inside properly and not poking out and make sure that the seams of the bunny ears are on each side so on the left and on the right side and then as you can see here you have to just sew like a curve so that it falls nicely onto the head onto your head of course <laughs> and yeah i'm pretty much just sewing it and yeah and here's the first ear as you can see it's nice and clean i've made sure to go over it twice that's also really important so that it's reinforced and then i just went on to do the second one as well and that's basically the same procedure just a second time as with the buttons so yeah just sew it in a curve make sure to go over it twice to reinforce it and that's basically the top part finished so now we got a closed beanie essentially and yeah here's the finished body with the bunny ears so step one and two or a and b are done and yeah looks pretty nice in my opinion and i hope you could also make it this far <laughs> without losing your mind but yeah and here you can see it in the mirror looks pretty nice the shape is nicely done and here you can see the buttons as well looks like a good job to me and on to the third part of making the bunny mask is actually making the mask of the bunny mask you just need the sweater again just take the sleeves apart and here again i just measured by rule of thumb i just checked how big my face is and just cut it apart accordingly and yeah you just need both the sleeves cut them open and then just shape the nose piece at the top so it should be like a curve at the top so that it sits on the nose nicely it shouldn't be too curved otherwise it would prick into the nose and then you basically just have to sew downwards so that you actually close the gap and yeah when you have that you can go to the mirror and check out what it looks like on your face and do the rest over there here at the mirror you just have to hold the material onto your face and also mark your ear holes like actually with there where you mark them on the body of the mask and then just hold on at the bottom of the mask to know where you have to sew in so that it holds nicely So now you got your marked spots and you're holding it on the right side so you know where your chin goes and on the left side you have the markings for the ear holes. So basically then you have to sew in and just cut it like roundly as you can see there. I showed you with my finger and yeah here I'm just cutting it as you can see it's pretty straightforward and now we got the shape with the markings. And now you gotta get the scissors, cut a small hole in it and reinforce that hole. Otherwise it will fray and then there will be like problems with the mask itself. It can like fall off, it can be like really problematic. And yeah, that's pretty much the first hole I reinforced. Then you just gotta poke another hole, reinforce that as well. And just be careful because the knit material can get caught inside the sewing machine. So you have to be really careful when you reinforce those holes so yeah now we got the two holes reinforced and as you can see here the material frays on the side as well so we got to reinforce the sides as well so yeah just got to sew one straight line throughout the whole mask and yeah that's pretty much straightforward 
it's easy and there you go the mask is finished the holes are reinforced the mask is reinforced and now we can just fix it onto the top part so we got the bunny mask finished the body the ears and the mask itself drum roll please yeah it's pretty much done it came out really nicely i just took a picture to put it on my website if you want to get one make sure to follow my instagram and my tiktok and check out my website brandonjosh.com it's available there and yeah that's pretty much it. it was a cool experience and i hope i could help you make the mask itself and yeah show me your results make sure to tag me in pictures of you making them and yeah i'm gonna repost them and yeah let's go <sighs> so that's basically oh wait let me take this off that's basically how i make these bunny masks uh i got a lot more here so if you want to cop one make sure to follow me on my instagram my tiktok just dm me they run 80 euros plus shipping I make these with love and like as you can see there's still material left so you can even use this rest and make another one like if you have like a small head or you can just combine two colors and make one <laughs> new one out of two different sweaters so yeah that's basically what I did on this one here you can see it I made like a bunny mask out of two different materials and yeah, go crazy on the designing. Oh, and if you have any questions, leave them down below and let me know which part was the most annoying for you, <laughs> like in the process of making the bunny mask. For me, personally, I hate reinforcing like the holes for the mask itself because it's like, I don't know if you saw it in the tutorial, but sometimes like the material got jammed in the sewing machine and then you have to like basically like pull it out like really forcefully but yeah that's pretty much it so yeah if you have any questions just leave them down below i'll answer all of them have fun i hope i could help you in any way to make these bunny masks because i've i've been getting a lot of requests for the bunny masks to uh to actually make a tutorial on these so i just figured yeah i'm gonna give you the recipe for free that's basically what i want to like gift to you that's like a small gift and by the way if you're still watching thank you so much for sticking through this video and as i said before there's a surprise for you coming right now as you can see this poster it's not actually just a poster a friend of mine marina thank you so much for helping me with the illustration she helped me make a instruction manual for the bunny masks so i have a pdf i'm gonna make a newsletter and you have to just subscribe to the newsletter and then you'll get the pdf for free so then you don't just have to watch the video you can also just lay it out i can just show you a preview right here you can lay out the uh, instruction manual and make the bunny masks according to it so yeah thank you so much marina for helping me with this it turned out so great as did all the bunny masks before and now this bunny mask i hope i could help you in any way Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like the video. It helps a lot. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow my Instagram. We're almost at 30K followers. Make sure to follow my TikTok. It's all linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.
Oh, and by the way, all my pieces come with Brandon Josh. Wait, I'm going to cover that because it looks ugly <laughs> with Brandon Josh tags. So then you know it's real.